I am so honored to be here with these two very esteemed colleagues and with all of you out here. I can't, oops, I can't tell you what an honor it is to be here with so many people that I've known about in the past. Some of you I've met before, many of you I've communicated with, uh, you know, email, phone, whatever, and it's great to meet you in person. I know there are many more like you that are out there that couldn't make it to the conference. I'm so grateful to be able to be here today, uh, and, and it's just terrific. And the speakers have been just wonderful. You found it great, even better. <laughs> Thank you, Dale. Um, so I am so impressed by what's been said here so far. What I'm going to be talking about is very different. It's very simple, and it's the sort of thing that I find very democratic democratic, it's very, uh, I'm talking about procedures that are very, very simple that anybody walking in off the street could understand. They could totally um, uh, process, they could look at what we're doing and we, they could say, yeah, this election is counted fairly. And I like that. I mean, I like that all of us have a lot of uh, technical experience and advanced degrees and everything else, but what about the person that doesn't have a PhD or the person that doesn't have a, ba a bachelor's degree or, or even a high school degree? They're citizens too. They get to vote too and their vote counts their vote matters, and I want them to be able to understand how it is that their vote fits into everything else that is cast in my county, which is Columbia County, New York. So I'm an election commissioner in Columbia County, New York. Columbia County is a couple of hours north of New York City. It's a fairly rural county. We have about 40,000 voters. And um, I did not start out in life thinking, I'm going to wind up being an election administrator. You know, that wasn't, it wasn't anywhere in, in what I was envisioning for myself. I think probably most of you weren't really thinking you were going to be here doing this any, either. Um, in 2000, well, I had been in academia, I had been in public relations, and in 2008, the uh, Democratic Election Commissioner position became vacant and I was asked if I would become commissioner. I thought, oh, I'm, I'm not qualified for that. I'm not a, a lawyer. I, I've never done anything like that before. I've run for office. I've been an inspector of elections, but this is not something I could do. I finally was convinced to do it. And um, so late, late 2008, after the presidential election, I became commissioner. So in 2009, um, we had a couple of elections, and we, they were run on lever voting machines, which is what New York State had until 2010, when we were required to start using optical scanners. And like uh, California, which has pretty good election laws, as, as I understand as, and as I heard today, New York State has pretty good election laws also. And New York State made sure that we got nothing but optical scanners, so we all have paper ballots, and New York State has um, an audit law as well. I don't think it's a very good audit law. It's not good enough for me. Um, but what we do is we all have to count some paper ballots. And what I have heard over the last years is from reputable sources saying that other reputable sources, authority figures in elections have said, you can't count paper ballots. They can't do it. They can't do it. It's a little bit of what Ray was saying. You know, if you don't have the right procedures in place, uh, it, it's, it's not pretty. You can't count paper ballots. And I'm here to say you can count paper ballots. We've been doing it since 2010 when we, start, when we started. We had to use the optical scanners. My counterpart and I didn't want to. We wanted to stick with the lever machines. And there are some people here that were very helpful in trying to uh, get us to keep the lever machines, but that was not possible. Uh, so we had to start using optical scanners, and we did, but my counterpart and I said, we're going to count all the paper ballots. We're going to get the scanned result, but we're going to hand count all the paper ballots after the fact. And it seemed like a pretty, um, uh, could, could be a very difficult undertaking, and it was <clears throat> a difficult undertaking for the first couple of times that we did it. And then after we did it a few times, it got a lot easier to the point that now, having counted a couple of dozen elections, paper ballots, and it's not really 100% that we count anymore. <clears throat> I call it a modified 100% hand count audit. Um, but a lot of the races are counted 100%. I can tell you, it's not that hard. It doesn't take that long. And it doesn't cost that much. 
I'm telling you, it's not that big a deal. As I think it was Ray said, you just have to hire more employees. You hire more people and it works. They get good at it, you hire them over and over at, again and again, they get really good at it. We've got a good system. We have systems and we have documentation, we have procedures, and we let anybody see what the documentation and the procedures are so that everybody coming in, watching, can see exactly what we're doing. And if they're, you know, if they look quizzically, I go to them and I say, here, this is what we've already done, and this is the next step, and this is what, how the form is being used, and you know, you need to be able to understand this, and you can stand right here and you can watch all the counting take place. You can't touch anything, but you're very welcome to be here. And so, you know, people will come in and they'll watch <clears throat> for a while, and then they usually get bored and leave, which is fine. But at any rate, you can't count paper ballots. I'm here to say you can count paper ballots. And in New York State, because we do have this audit law, Every county in New York State counts some paper ballots, but it's not a great audit law. It requires that every county audit 100% of 3% of the machines that are deployed in the county. In our county, we deploy 33 machines. So 3% of that is one machine. That misses a whole lot of races. That misses a whole lot of races because we have 23 different ballot styles. So we count one machine and we can't go any place from that, from there. So um, my counterpart and I said, no, we're gonna count all the ballots. So that's what we do. And uh, this is a photo that was taken by Jarrett Berg, who is the executive director of New York uh, Democratic Lawyers Council. And I got it from him, I received it from him last summer one day and I said, Jarrett, what are you doing? And this appears on a building in Hudson, which is our county seat, which is where our Board of Elections is. And I said, Jarrett, you're here? He said, yeah, my wife and I are here. We're having lunch. You want to join us? So I said, yeah. So this is kind of the way we feel about counting, you know, your vote in Columbia County. Your vote really counts in Columbia County. So. And it should. So what we have is uh, our modified 100% hand count elections. Uh, they include great community participation and that's one of the benefits of this. We encourage people to participate. We always need people to count the ballots. We need people to reconcile the ballots when they come back from the polls. Uh, we need to you know, make sure that we have every single ballot that we sent out to the poll, and we do. We reconcile the ballots to ev right down to the single ballot. In, Every single case, we reconcile them to every single ballot. We know where every single ballot is. And then we organize them so that they can be hand counted. We organize them into uh, packs, packets of 50 ballots. We get them all ready to go, and then the next day we start hand counting them. So that takes some people, and that's a good thing. You know, I go around to people and I say, hey, we need somebody to help us count uh, the day after the election. Typically, we ask our election inspectors, and they're happy to do it. You know, they earn a little bit more money, and we're happy to have them there with us, keeping, keeping the process going. It's a great democratic system. I love it. And people can come in and watch. They can come in and watch us open the bags that come back from the elections. And they can, you know, watch us looking at the seal numbers and confirming that the seal numbers are right. They're what came back to us from the poll site. They can watch all that. They get bored pretty quick and they usually leave. But that's okay. They have the right to do it. It's very democratic. So we have a lot of uh, communi community participation. Uh, there are lots of different roles that people can play, whether it's election inspector or or, or poll watcher or ballot catcher, which is the people that bring the ballots back from the polls at night, or it's a ballot counter doing the actual hand count audit, lots of things that people can do. And we've done a pretty good job of interesting people, uh, getting people interested in, in doing these different roles. Um, let's see. The paper ballots are fully secure. Uh, our uh, machines, memory cards, and election management systems are fully secure. Everything is under, everything is done bipartisanly, which I don't know if it's done that way every place across the nation or in the state, but everything is, there's a Republican and a Democrat watching every single thing that happens. Whenever anything is stored, it's stored in a room or a closet that has a Democrat and a Republican key. You know, nobody gets into or accesses any of those things without their counterpart there, so somebody is always watching. It's really very fully secure. Our hand count audit, it is quite robust. Um, 
We have a means for resolving conflicts. Where am I now? Okay, yeah, this is good. Okay. So my dream is, and I haven't really realized this, my dream is to use what we do in Columbia County as a model to actually encourage some other election administrators to do what we do because we think it works pretty well. It's easy, it's not, it's easy, it doesn't take that long, it doesn't cost that much. It costs us about 1% of our annual budget for our Board of Elections, 1% to do basically a 100% hand count. And I'll tell you what our basically a 100% hand count uh, involves. We hand count 100% of all the local races. All the local races, because they're, they're smaller and it's, uh, you know, there's a much bigger chance that they might be won or lost by one vote or two votes or three votes. A lot of our races are that, have that tight a margin. So, uh, you know, have, finding a difference of one or two or three or five votes is big. It's very, very important. In our bigger, more regional races, maybe a countywide race or a race in which our county is one of eight or one of 11 or one of an entire state, we do what the state requires. First, we audit that one machine that we're required to audit. We do 100% of that, no matter, you know, all the races. But then beyond that, we audit all of the local races, 100%, and then the regional races, we, we count as much as we feel is necessary. On election night, before the results are in, my counterpart, who I have to give a lot of credit to because he feels the same way that I do about this. We have to know how we know what we say we know when we certify our elections. Yeah, how do I know, how do I know? It's a number coming out of a black box. And you want me to sign off on that? I don't think so. So, going into um, the closing of polls on election night, my counterpart and I have this agreement that with the exception of races that are uncontested, where there's only one um, uh, candidate on the ballot, we're going to count 100%. Now we know that's gonna change after the results are in because it always has. We've done 24 of these so far. And we know that when you've got a governor's race and you had a margin of 15 points statewide, counting 100% of the governor's race in Columbia County is kind of silly. So we don't do that. When it gets to smaller regional races, we might count more than 3%, but we probably are not gonna count 100%. If any candidate wants us to can if a losing candidate, I should say, the winning candidate never cares, right? If any losing candidate wants us to count more than we were thinking of, we absolutely count every bit as much as they want. And they've never wanted more than we've counted. They've always been fine with the result that we have come up with. And I think one of the reasons is that we have a reputation now for uh, counting everything transparently, publicly, you know, 100%, if we have any questions, uh, you know, th then we change, we change the result based on voter intent. I have no idea where we are here. Okay, all right. <clears throat> and since everybody can come in and watch us count, if they have a problem, they know they can take us to court, you know, but that's never happened uh, based on the counts that we've been doing. Uh, we did have one situation where there was a candidate who lost with a pretty big margin, but I think the candidate didn't really exactly believe it. So while we two commissioners were ready to halt the count, this candidate wanted us to count more. So we did. You know, we counted some more precincts. And the candidate looked at it and said, oh, could you do some more? So we did some more. And then finally the candidate said, yeah, okay, I really lost. And that was that. And it was no big deal. It didn't take very long. It didn't cost very much. And it wasn't that hard. Big deal. You know what? All the losers in Columbia County get it. They lost. And we don't ever have anybody coming back to us after the election and saying, I want a recount. A recount of what? We already did that. You know, they're really satisfied with what's happened. So where are we? Um, 
Oh, okay. So um, they're welcome in the room where it happens. They want to be able to see what it was that happened. And this is what I'm saying. People have full access to, next slide. There we go. They have full access to our entire ballot counting process. And this is from Hamilton. You know, it's a great song. And if you were online with this right now, you could, you could press that, click that, and you'd get, you'd get the song, you know? The room where it happens. No one else is in the room where it happens, the room where it happens. No one really knows how the game is played, the art of the trade, how the sauces get made. We just assume that it happens. Yeah, well, in Columbia County, you really get to see it. So I made up some beautiful graphics to show you <laughs> what happens to a voted ballot. Okay, this is election night. The polls have closed. Our inspectors have organized all the ballots. They have found all the ballots, and they report that on a statement of canvas. And then they seal them up with a couple of bipartisan ballot catchers watching, observing. They seal it up. Um, and then uh, these four people, two Democrats, two Republicans, sign a form saying these are the seal numbers. All right? Um, so you've got a Democrat and a Republican who are the ballot catchers. They ride in a single vehicle. They collect all the um, uh, election materials, all the ballots. They get in that single vehicle and they bring them to the Board of Elections. When they get to the Board of Elections, there's a Democrat and Republican that meet the other Democrat and Republican and they sign, that continue to sign the chain of custody to fill out the chain of custody document. Um, and then as soon as all that is done and everybody's convinced that nothing has happened to those ballots in transit from the poll site to the Board of Elections, a bipartisan team takes all those documents and puts them in a double locked room and they get locked up bipartisanly and nobody can access them until the next day. Um, and then the next day, they have to be brought out from that double locked room um, and then they get reconciled by a bipartisan team of reconcilers who make sure that they have every single ballot, and they do have every single ballot, they find every single ballot. It's a little bit of a challenge sometimes, but they do find and account for every single ballot. We have never had a situation where we couldn't find a ballot. We get them all back, we know exactly where they all are. They organize them so that they're ready to be counted, and then they're put back into a, uh, this double locked room until the next day when they get counted. The next day they get counted by teams of four, two Democrats, two Republicans, <clears throat> and uh, they confirm that they have all the right balance that they should have, and then when they're done with it, what do I do with my glasses? Oh, here they are. When they're done with it, then they give it back to Board of Elections staff who just confirm that everything looks good there. They compare, we use, we hand count, but we also use the machine totals. They compare the machine totals to the hand count, and usually they're the same. I mean, our counters are good. You can hand count paper ballots. I'm telling you, it can be done. It's not impossible at all. It's not rocket science. They confirm that the hand count num numbers match the machine numbers, and usually they do. If they do, then the, bag, uh, the ballot bag is returned to the double lock closet. But sometimes they don't. And what do we do if that is the case? Then, when that comparison is made between the hand count totals and the machine count totals, um, the Board of Elections staff looked for a flag ballot because our counters have learned, because they've been doing this for a while, they have learned what kinds of votes a machine can't count but they have learned whether or not they're valid votes. And so they count valid votes that were cast because they honor voter intent, because that's what it's all about, right? It's not really about how the machine counts. That's not the important thing. The important thing is, what did the voter want? So we honor what the voter wanted. And they take that ballot and they put it on top of the stack so that our Board of Elections stack, staff, when they're comparing the two, say, oh, here's that vote. This is why the different, there's a difference in the two. And oftentimes, that just solves it right there, end of story. If it's not the case, and sometimes hand counters do make a mistake. I mean, it's, a, it's really tedious work. They can make a mistake. Sometimes 
the Board of Elections staff will say, okay, we would like you to recount this race. They don't give the counters any idea of what they're looking for. They just say, recount this race, recount the voids, recount the blanks, um, see if you get a different total. And typically, they come up with a, a different total and we're able to uh, resolve those discrepancies. And it doesn't really take forever. Like I said, it's not that hard. Um, and so after all that is over, we certify, and only after all that is over, and that's fully transparent. Everybody can come in and look very closely at what it is that we've been doing. So we've got a bunch of key documents. Everybody can look at them. They're available. And I can show them to you if you like. Um, we make good use of the machine numbers. And I, I really wouldn't, I, originally we thought we'd like to do this without using the scanners. I wouldn't like to do it that way now. The scanners give us great information. It's a great um, baseline to go from. And we often make very small changes in our results based on voter intent. It's always been based on voter intent. And I just want to show you a few ballots that uh, voters count one way, hand counters count one way, and the machine counts a different way. If you'll see off, oops, okay. Mm, there you go, sorry. Off to the left, the ovals are filled in perfectly. When you get off to the right, the voter started filling in ovals off, you know, off center, and the machine didn't read those as votes. Hand counters absolutely read them as votes. Okay, in a vote for governor, it's not going to make a difference. In a vote for a town council, it might. I'm telling you, we have a lot of tie votes, a lot of, you know, victories by one. It makes a big difference. Uh, so the next one... Oh, the next one is sort of unfortunate. This is, this is a voter that made a mistake and corrected it and then initialed the ballot. So this is one that invalidates the ballot. Oh, well, that happens. Um, here's another one that is kind of like the other first one that I showed you, but it's even more extreme. We absolutely counted all those votes, and the machine did not count those votes. And here's one from last month's primary election where there was a write-in write uh, campaign. And the Dominion image cast, which is what we use, and maybe all scanners do this, will recognize write-in votes by recognizing that there's something on the write-in line. Well, there was nothing on the write-in line, but clearly this voter wanted to vote for two write-in candidates. They were announced write-in candidates. Most counties wouldn't have ever looked at this ballot, but we looked at this ballot because we count 100%. So most counties wouldn't have found this. So these two candidates might have lost this race because nobody ever knew these votes were here. We knew the votes were there because we look at all the ballots. And all four inspector, uh, all four counters, as soon as they saw this, they instantly said, vote, vote. You know, there was no question. So I can't not, you know, give you a picture of Boss Tweed. In counting, there is strength. Uh, as long as I count the votes, what are you going to do about it? And this is a picture of, of some, one of our teams of, of counters, two Democrats, two Republicans. And they enjoy doing this work. It's, it's, a, it's a great exercise in democracy, in civics, uh, getting people together. The community participation is fabulous. They really do enjoy it. And, you know, we, we pay them. They like getting the pay. They like coming together and doing this. And they're all working not really so much for their party, they're all working to try to get the vote right and to honor the voters' intentions. And, you know, the, it, in summary, I would just say, I would love to see more people get involved this way. I would love to see more people get involved as inspectors, as ballot catchers, you know, as poll watchers, coming to watch the counts. Um, I would love to see more election law lawyers. We really need more election law lawyers. I, I think it's great what you all are doing, and I'd love to see more counties doing this. Thank you. I'm sorry? Yep, we have 40,000 voters. How, how, can, how can a big county hand count ballots? We, everybody, everybody tells us, oh, you can do it in Columbia County because you're so small. And I say, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. You could do a better job because 
you, you could do the same job that we do because you have more people than we do. We don't have very many people. We only have the number of people that we have and we manage to count the votes. But LA County, look at all the people you have that you could hire to do this. And that's why you have more ballots to count, because you have so many more people. We have fewer ballots to count because we have fewer people. It works. It's just about hiring more people. It's about establishing layers of management. You know, you, the bigger counties manage to do so many other processes in accordance with their, their population. They manage to do it. Why can't they do it in counting votes? Thank you.